today that so many of us who are here came with a level of frustration. And I know I understand. But we're going to take that frustration to the place of prayer. You know, the scripture says, <laughs> and when Zion travails, she shall birth. So many of us have travail postures. I am going to kneel down and travail. We give you all the glory. We Jesus seven times. What we want to do is loosen what has been losing in heaven so it can reflect here on earth. As we call the blood of Jesus prophetically seven times, we loosen that which God has loosened over Nigeria in the realm of the spirit for it to begin to reflect physically. And so on the count of one, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the will of God for Nigeria today be superimposed on earth. In Jesus' name, please be seated. Thank you so much, Pastor Gideon and Pastor Bethel for putting this together. 
I want to say a very huge thank you to every man of God who has graced this altar today. We say God bless you. And for every one of us who is here today, thank you for your labor of love over this country. God sees your heart, believe me. He knows how much you love this country. But you see, no matter how much you love Nigeria, you can't love it half as much as Yahweh does. So our call as the body of Christ is to submit our will to the will of God for this country to become that which God sees. And if we find ourselves going against that original will, we're fighting the very God that created this country. And I need you to open your heart and listen to me with every inch of your heart. And I pray that as you listen to me, that every sentiment in your heart, you will begin to drop them. Because much more than anything, God is the biggest chess master in the game of chess. Believe me when I say so. And today we are going to be reading very quickly Joshua chapter 1 verse 3 to 6 because we want to pray for the economy of this nation. Every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. This is God speaking to Joshua. And he says, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards going, the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man, verse 5 is very interesting. We'll come back to verse 5 as we go through. He says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I, would, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Then he goes to verse 6. Be strong, Nigerians, and be of good courage. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to your fathers to give them. The Lord bless this word over Nigeria in the name of Jesus. You see, the architecture we're discussing today is the Joshua's architecture. And the Joshua architecture is the finisher. Meaning, these were not men who were necessarily there when the vision was conceived. They inherited the vision. They understood their part to play in the vision. And they finished the vision. And that is why it looked as though Moses got all the commandments. And when it was time for them to enter into the territory and take possession, it was handed to Joshua the finisher. So many of us here today are Joshua's. Carrying the finisher's anointing. And until we enter into our roles as finishers, we'll be fighting cheap. Rather than fighting with conquest in our mind. If you read the account of Joshua, Joshua was a crazy man. Pardon me, Jesus. He was a crazy man. I'm saying the man who will look at the sun. Yo, yo stand still. I want to do something today. And the sun will stand still. And he'll say, you moon, go to the valley of Ajalon. I want to do something today. They were radical with a conquest mindset. They recognized that there were territories to be taken and they knew their authority in God. They wielded it to take territories. The, the, my brother who spoke earlier was talking about what we're facing, what we're up against, but we don't even understand. No, guys, the battle is not for children. If we're going to take over Nigeria, we are looking for men with stature. Can I say that again, brothers? And this may sound corny, but we're looking for men with stature. Men who would make a sound in the realm of the spirit and the demons will cower and say, she's here. He's here. I need to give her space. Not men whose voices will sound like, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, just, I know, who are you? So, as the body today, because I'm speaking to the economy of this nation, in order to move any change that is sustainable, we need firepower. When I say firepower, I'm talking about financial muscle. And when God wants to release financial power to a people, it comes in diverse ways. And those are the things we're going to be praying about today. We are very aware of a particular prophecy of Pa Elton over Nigeria. We have seen the earlier parts of the prophecy. I mean, it has plagued us for the longest time. We are now waiting for the other part where Nigeria will be prosperous. But you see, every time there's a prophetic word, there's an equal amount of battle, even not bigger, that goes with the prophetic word. So literally, let me look my last. So we, God is not, we're not waiting for God. God is waiting for us. Did you get that? We're not waiting for God. 
He's waiting for us. If my people who are called by my name will humble, what does humble themselves mean? Come and surrender everything and say, Father, all or nothing, I must see this new Nigeria. And they give it their all, surrendering their personal ambitions to say this means nothing until that which I have seen in my eyes about Nigeria comes to fruition. That's what it means to humble yourself and come before God. Are we really doing that as a body? Let this prick you while you sit here. Are we doing that as a body? Or is it about personal ambition? Self-recognition, self-aggrandizement. Is it really about submitting all I feel like I want to do to say, what do you want to do? And lay it all so that you can become the vessel for the manifestation of the prophecy. Believe me, those who hold the souls of this country will not give it up without a fight. The big question is, are you ready? Spiritually, physically, politically, we can see it. Believe me. So like my brother said earlier, there calls for strategy across the different mountains of influence. Collaborative strategy where every strata is holding his forte and is backing it up with power and stature so that we can manifest that which God has given unto us. And so, if God is going to bring the agenda for this nation into pass, and he's going to release wealth into the men and women who are going to be able to power the major drive that will change this country, it means a lot of things. And I'm going to try to explain it in economic terms so that we can press in individually. Number one, it means that God is going to release or give unto men to become custodian of ideas. So sometimes you get an idea, go and do this, and you think, how does this matter in the scheme of transforming this country? What you don't understand is that it is seed in the economic path to bring about the emancipation and the revelation of the new ninth area. So when God gives you an idea, a business idea, is for you to treasure and steward in a way that it becomes a superpower that can power every initiative required to birth the new Nigeria. I had a conversation with one of my team members yesterday and she had just recently been employed to work for a group of young men. They founded a startup company. In 2020, and as of today, that company is worth $5 million in valuation. They started in 2020. And she said the first day she resumed at this office that something baffled her. That the three founders, young men, they would enter into a room, and do brakori and zatali and kavasha. What was meant to be their early morning meetings was lekari and kubasha kata and do brakosi and kavasha. And she said she stood at one corner. She's wondering. I thought they were yuppie boys. These are men who know how to press in in prayer. They get business ideas that God can transform with the speed of light until they become powerful enough to power kingdom agendas. Most of you are sitting here and you are playing with what God has given you. You have no idea what you carry as a vessel to the transformation of this nation. Stop playing. Our time is up. Number two. Custodians of investable global businesses investable global businesses. Everything in life rises and falls to the level of structure you have in everything God has given unto you. God will not come and force your eyes to see what you carry. God loves you. But you see, if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, he can be, he will give it to you as it is. Rita, can't you see what I've been showing you? And if it takes him 10 years to attempt to make you see, unfortunately, that's on you, not on him. Investable global businesses. Businesses that the private sector, a.k.a. the church, will sit in meetings that matter in the world and they can legislate. At that point, they can rally economic power to move things in this country. Imagine if Mark Zuckerberg was a Nigerian and a believer. You didn't get that. Imagine if that, he was a Nigerian and a believer. Sitting in meetings that matter and say, yo, I need your money. I need to move things in Nigeria. We are here. He's not different from us, believe me. 
Number three, what it means is man will be positioned for enormous work. Okay, the Holy Spirit said, go back to that point. They didn't get it. <laughs> so, it means to say that when God gives you an idea, as a believer, especially as part of the end time army, your first prerogative is to sit with God until he shows you where he's going with that business. So you have an understanding of what you carry. So that you walk worthily of what you carry. Yes. In 2021, the Lord started to tell me about building a pseudo organization that rivals one of the most powerful companies in this continent. <laughs> and the first day he gave me that idea. I said to him, I said, sir, you are setting me up to rival the most powerful institution in this continent. He said, yes, I am. And he says, no, I'm not setting you up to rival them. You are more than them. And I said, you know God can pump you. Have you ever sat in those meetings where God will be firing you? You'll be like, hey, me, Jesus. He's good at that. He says, I gave them the initial mandate, but they have allowed corruption enter into their midst and so they cannot carry out their agenda. He says, so I'm sending you as the independent private sector. Go in unnoticed. Go in unseen and execute that which I want you to execute. There are so many of you seated here who are carrying investable and global businesses bigger than economy of nations put together. But because you cannot see it, God will be saying, when will this girl get it? When will she get it? When will he get it? And guess what? The future of this country is waiting for men and women like you. The scripture says, all of creation, just oppose Nigeria, all of Nigeria is waiting for the earnest manifestation of the sons of God. That global business is inside of you. God requires the billions of dollars to mobilize the grassroots and take over power. And we are here. Kale Brazilian Deveriande Kozi Katakasha. Number three, what it means economically is men will be positioned for enormous wealth transfer, those capable of paying the debt of nations. Ha, huh. my brothers, I feel like to a very large extent, we sabotage ourselves as believers. And I mean this respectfully. Uh -huh. Holy Spirit says, say it again three times. I feel like as believers, we sabotage ourselves. And I say that respectfully. I feel that as believers, we sabotage ourselves. And I say that respectfully. We alone have access to the mind of God. Do you guys recognize that? I'm saying we have access to the mysteries of God. I'm saying the God who knows the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning. We have access to that. I'm saying God can come to you and say, just... I'm doing this in Nigeria. Do you want in? That's what we have access to. But with that level of access, see what we're producing. Is that not self-sabotage? You should live here very angry at yourself. The number of things that played out in the political arena in the last three weeks, I was saying to Pastor Gideon, God showed me and he told me clearly, exactly this was how it was going to happen. I was busy telling God I won't take it. I will not accept it. This cannot be. And he just went quiet on me. I went back three days later. I said, sir, you said, he said, but I've told you. And I said, I said, we not take it, sir. After a while, I said, but why not? It was at that point I said, okay. When God asks you that kind of question, just recognize that he has an entire chess played out. And I said, ask me why not? I said, I have to give canal reasons. They are this, they are that, they are that, they are that, they are that. When I was done, he just said, <laughs> and went quiet on me. I was saying to Pastor Gideon, I wish I knew. I would have said, I don't understand it though. It doesn't necessarily make sense to you, but show me where you're going. <laughs> you see, sometimes, my dear brothers, I will be very honest with you today. Some of us are fighting against the very God who is fighting for us. In what we think should be the logical way things should be. Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. 
And God chose to show him the dream so that he can preserve the people. Yet, it was Pharaoh. You think that God is dead? I ask you believers, you think that God is dead? That people should be saying, make me the Joseph. Make me the Daniel. Make me the Esther. Send me in there. Give me their souls. Give me their life. Give me their heart. Give me their control system. The men who run the systems are run by others under. Do you recognize that? The men who run the systems are run by others under. We should be the others if we're not the ones there. Daniel was old. After three dispensations, they will still go and look for him inside his cave. Sir, you were relevant to show us what to do. We are the believers. Our ministry does not end in the church. It starts in the church. And if we tabernacle in the church, we are wasting firepower that the world needs. So believers, wake up! Nigeria is waiting for you. Men will be positioned for enormous transfer of wealth capable of paying the debt of nations. You see, the num- past couple of days, the number of things that have happened, God started to show me different areas of things that can potentially happen in the next couple of days. I can't share them publicly. And I want to put this out here as a warning to the body. Individually, collectively, that there may be an avenue for some men in the body to be brought into inner carcass. Don't be the first to throw that stone at them. Don't be the first to call them they have been bought. Don't be the first to call them corrupt. Instead, pray for them to go with the Joseph's anointing. Pray for them to go their position to receive the wealth and bring it back for kingdom. Strategy must change. And the strategy is centered on where is God going? I move in that direction. Irrespective of how I feel, how I don't feel. Where is he going? I move in that direction. We're fighting what is not fighting us. What is fighting us? We haven't gotten there. <laughs> You will understand. All of these things the Lord wants to do economically is unrighteous. But you see, there is a stature required to position and receive these things. There is a stature required to position as these things. If you must become that person, you must understand Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, he says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses. Believers, can you say that with your chest? That if you enter into places that be, no man will be able to stand against you. I came to, I came to prick your soul so that you live here angry. Can you say it with your chest that you will enter into places where there are vultures, there are serpents, there are demons, and you will say, no man, and it will be. Can you enter into a place there was a demonic agenda? As you enter, you come with a presence. They begin to say, welcome, ma. What do you want us to do, ma? Stature. And my brother Elias said it. This is the time where we tabernacle in the place of prayer and we ascend and ascend until we touch something in the spirit. What we are touching is not what is going to buy us rice and beans, sir. Ma. What we are touching in the realm of the spirit is kobinomi, talk and do. Let me share this vision. A day before the, pri- two days before the primary elections. <laughs> we do a normal every midnight prayer with some of my ladies who I mentor. And at this midnight, what we pray for is yieldedness and alignment of the body of Christ and the nation, the continent. That's what we pray for. And at this night, we were praying. And I saw in the spirit a particular politician's mouth being rubbed vehemently with incantations. It was this, vehemently. I'm not talking about lipstick kind of rub. With incantations. And as I was looking at it, I was so angry. I said, what's the meaning of this nonsense? And as I said it out, I said, this is what I see in, my, in the spirit of my people. Let's pray about it. 
Oh, love Razia and the Kavasu Kotoska. Two days later, the very thing we saw was what happened. Everything you see the demonic world manifest is a copy of what ex exists in God. I hope you recognize it. And the higher power is in God. So if there's cobin on me for them to rob mouth and they say a thing, everybody follows. You carry the bigger cobin on me. You are the inventor of the cobin on me. But can you boast of that? Can you boast of that? If the economic team of the nation is going to be inaugurated, can they think of a believer? And if for any reason you enter there, can you go to Shari Ravai in the night and go into a, an economic meeting and tell them, this is what the Lord has said to me and this is what we are doing? And all of them say, yes, ma, we follow. We fight differently these days. Move. Where you are tabernacling, God has moved. If you understand what I'm saying. You are fixated on men. God is fixated on the kingdom. Believers, God is not fixated on a man. He's fixated on the kingdom. Why are you staying where God has left? It's about an agenda. What is the agenda? Do you understand the length and breadth of it? I spoke to two economic, uh, economic development, I mean, finance consultants two days ago. And why she was, of course, believers. And while she was talking about how she didn't understand what was going on in the political scene, I said, can we move from that conversation? Can I ask you a straight question? I said, what is God's agenda for Nigeria economically? She couldn't talk. I said, that's the problem, sis. I said, that's the problem. You're fighting a battle that doesn't exist. Where is God going economically in this nation? Do you have a blueprint? Do you have a framework? What are you doing here if you don't? What is your prayer time about if you don't have it? Why then should they bring you to the carcass of people who will transform this nation? What do you have to bring to the table? We have access to divine intelligence, both for corporate and social relevance and transformation. What are we doing with it? You are in the food industry. There's food shortage berage in Africa right now. You don't even have an answer for it. Yet you pray every day. I'm challenging you to change your strategy. Guys, change your strategy. The concept of taking territories is for all of us to divide and conquer. Stay in your place as the economic person and say, Father, the economy of this nation, give me the blueprint. Give the other person in media the blueprint. Give the other person in politics the blueprint. And we converge with power and begin to execute. That's the strategy. Until we get to that place, on the strength of this, we're going to pray. The first thing we're going to pray for is the wisdom to transform divine intelligence into corporate, social, political relevance. Social, corporate, political relevance. The wisdom to transform it. And you see, guys, I, I, I like that. Some of the things I teach, I don't just teach them to motivate. I like that. By the grace of God, I'm an embodiment of some of the things I teach. Or most of the things I teach. In 2020, I was talking to God about the unemployment situation in Nigeria. Africa, actually. And I said to him, I'm tired. What can we do about it? And he said to me, just this is why it's happening. And he showed me three different things we were doing wrong. And says, if you want to correct it, do it this way this way, this way. From that conversation, we birth an entire curriculum that would end youth unemployment in Africa. We're working on it underneath. That's just one. Amongst the plenty of things. I find that our biggest challenge is we don't even understand the God we serve. Honestly. We think the God we serve is for bread, butter, provision. He's for those things. But beyond it all, he created the heavens, the earth, everything that exists in any realm that exists. So if you are related with God on the strength of, I want an admission, sir, that's all you get. And those who are able to relate in a level where they get even the heavens as their inheritance, they collect it. 
men who will sit at territories and command an entire territory, physically and spiritually, they know that the power exists. <laughs> Just this final gist before we leave here. Again, before this political election, this primaries, I mean, I was in a dream. And in this dream, my husband and I, I told Pastor Gideon, we're going on a trip. I don't even know where we were going, but we entered into the plane. And as we had boarded the plane, as the pilot took off, I heard the Holy Spirit in the dream, tell, tell, tell me, tell this pilot to land you an emergency at this place. And I said to the Holy Spirit, but this is not an airport. He said, tell him now. This was in the dream. And I obliged. I said, Mr. Pilot, I need you to drop me, uh, draw an emergency landing here. I want to get down. And in the dream, surprisingly, the man obliged. In fact, he took the plane and went over water and then landed on ground. Apparently, there was a private airspace there. The man landed there, dropped me, and then took off with the plane. As he took off with the plane, I began to see what was a turbulence. The kind of turbulence I've not even watched in movies. God bless you. The kind of turbulence I've never, I've not even seen. Oops. The kind of turbulence I've not seen even in movies. And as that turbulence kept going on and on, what was meant to happen in that dream was that entire plane was meant to crash. Blood was meant to be spilled for a particular person to come and drink. Now, I know this may not make sense to you. But you see how God is. In the same dream, I saw the person who was meant to drink that blood. With our eyes locked. We locked eyes with each other. I looked at the person like, what's this person doing here? But I moved on with my, with my agenda. Because God pulled me down from that train and he said to me, just that plane must not crash. So he said, begin to walk the length and breadth of the territory. In this dream, I kept walking and declaring, all elements of creation are at peace with me. I decree and declare the angels of the heaven. Literally, I began to decree and declare. This plane struggled for 20 minutes to crash, but it could not crash. Because God sent a priest to hold that territory and say, nothing will happen here. The plane eventually came down. The tires from underneath fell off. If you understand what that means in aviation, it should normally crash. But the plane fell down like a metal on the floor. Cuckoo. I literally heard that sound in the dream. And as it fell down, all the nozzles for fuel began to pour out. So technically, the next thing is plane crash. But I stood there. And I began to say, open up the um, door so that they can enter. All the people in the dream were looking at me like this. It's almost as though they could not see me, but I could see them. Then I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, tell the angels to open the door. So I just said, in the name of Jesus, angels of the living, door, living God, break that door open. The door broke open. All the men who were inside the plane began to come out. They were drenched in oil. But as I saw the first person come out, I started to dance. Ewa won't oluwa shefu me. As I was dancing, all of them came out. Not one blood was spilled. I shared this story to say there are territorial powers. If the church, if you are not a territorial power, it does not mean there's not a territorial power. The big question is they are deciding your faith. They are deciding your economic future. They are de they're deciding the, the outcome of your business. They are deciding the policies that make or mar your business. They are, dis they, are dis they are detecting the inflation rate and everything that matters in this nation. It should be you. So we are going to rise up and pray. My time is up. We are going to rise up and pray. And if you understand the things I have taught you, please pray with intensity. The wisdom to transform divine intelligence into corporate and social relevance. Ikra baruza zakatos kalabrande kash. Azibra so so kati zakalabrande zakatos katakasha. Ibede bede 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 o shatele kronde zakatashka. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 3 says I will give you hidden treasures. Today we are going to pray that Lord show me the money in raw, in process form. In raw, in process form. We're going to pray that prayer now. And as you begin to pray that prayer, your eyes will begin to open literally. Things will begin to drop in your spirit. They may look like ideas. They may look like words. They may look like places. They may look like people. But hold it. 
Because the Lord will open your eyes. Let's begin to pray that prayer now. Zale baruza zekata sekatoska. Indra baruzu zule brende zaze katakasko lokoshka. Indra barakata katoska le brekonde kavarande zokotoshka. In Duba Zuzu Zakiande Kavasho Kotoska. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. If you are called to the mountain of economy, please come outside. I want to speak a word over you. And this one is so powerful. And Abaru Zuzu Zeliande Kubara Kata Sekrendo Zozokoska La Pande Kaba. Rogadu Jibra Zezekindo Kovo Shakata. Businessmen and women, stop looking at yourselves as though all you do is to make money. If that's all you see, that's all you ever get. What you carry in your hand is not just a tool to eat. You must see beyond that. In the name of Jesus, I decree over a person who is in the mountain of economy here, gathered everywhere in the country, watching online, that the Lord is going to cause you to enter into rooms where you are put in power to be able to disperse funds in the name of Jesus. The grace to be able to come into rooms. In the name of Jesus, I release wisdom and mental agility to scale. There is a wisdom and mental agility required to scale what the Lord has put in your hands. It's not by your strength. It's not by the certifications. It's not by the people you know. It's a certain kind of wisdom to scale and the mental agility to carry more. I release that grace over the house in the name of Jesus. From today, your businesses will never be small. If you had any small one, if the Lord does not close it, he will cause you to carry a new vision. From today, the grace will deliver generations. I release unto this house in the name of Jesus. Azuparande Finally, oh Lord, we ask for collaborative wisdom to multiply resources rapidly and exponentially in the name of Jesus. We ask for collaborative wisdom, collaborative wisdom to multiply resources rapidly and exponentially in the name of Jesus. That I will see you, I will not look at you as my competitor. I will see you as somebody who our one plus one can become one million, not even ten. Yeah. There is a mystery that gives one plus one, one million, not ten. And that's the grace for multiplication exponentially. I release over Nigeria in the name of Jesus. You know, you know, while many of you stood out here, uh, the Lord just whispered to me that if you really understand what he's about to do and you understand what this or what this is really about you uh, you, you you're going to have to pray differently and I, I i sense strongly that god wants us to have when she talked about the collaboration it just made sense that all of you here if we can if you can sign on god has used just to create systems for empowering people small businesses and all of that that we can get into some kind of conversation and training and master classes and and mentorship that allows you go from here to there there's a joseph anointing in this room right now did you hear what I said? And those of you watching online, the Joseph anointing is, is that anointing that helps you interpret and, and turn your tongues to economic solutions. So you are able to say to the king, this is what we must do. You become a futurist. You become one who can stand in the prophetic anointing in the economic space. Did you know right now in America, in some parts of the world, that as they employ different people in different uh, 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 offices into multinationals, they also employ prophets? Did you hear what I just said? Multinationals employ prophets to show them the future. And you know when you get to that realm, it could be any of the worlds, any of the demonic realm, that, and it could be God. But I'm trying to say that God is raising you up as entrepreneurs, as, as people in that space to understand that money must be with a mission.
And the money must have an agenda. The money in your hands must fulfill God's purpose. You can't just be catching fish. You must be making men. The greatest revival we're going to see just before Jesus returns is going to happen in the marketplace. Listen, a man who preached in stadiums around the world, Billy Graham, he could have said we're going to see it in stadiums. He said that the, the harvest of the end time is going to happen in the marketplace, which means there is an anointing we must carry from the church into the business place. After Sunday morning, something must happen Monday to Saturday. There must be an empowerment as priests. Money is spiritual, I hope you know. Money is spiritual, I hope you know. So I'm going to ask you to write your names. Those of you online, there's a link. I want you to, if you want to be part of this economic uh, cluster, whatever we'll call it, for training, for, for empowerment, not just so that, like we said, you need to understand, we're not talking about you just making it. We are saying you are connecting your business to national transformation. You are saying your idea will solve a national problem. If that's not why you are here, if your money is not to solve problems at that level, then you're not supposed to be here. But if you make a covenant with God and say, Lord, you are giving me power to make wealth so that you can establish your purpose and your plan for Nigeria. If that is your prayer, every one of you online, everyone in this place, lift your hands right now and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, and say, Lord, I receive. Uh, I receive. Uh, I rededicate my business. I rededicate my idea. I rededicate my, 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 my craft to you. I dedicate it to you right now. By the Spirit of the living God. Uh, we speak uh, that Joseph's are rising into the economic space uh, of our nation from the church Joseph's are rising Basalios are rising in the name of the Lord Jesus men who understand the mandate of heaven will handle resource will handle money in the name of Jesus men of you watching online receive that impartation right now Kira Pasca rededicate your business to the Lord thank you father so as just makes this declaration over you just receive it every one of us here receive it because indeed God is empowering the church to handle wealth for the furtherance of his purpose and his will but in our nation and the nations of the earth so just receive this declaration and just speak over God's people father we thank you because we know that when we call you answer and as we lift up our hands to the heavens today we decree that the heavens be open over this ones and everyone who is gathered all across the world in the name of jesus the heavens be open for economic ideas for economic blueprints in the name of jesus the heavens be open and the anointing for scale be released unto you in the name of jesus from this meeting you begin to see how that small business is is a multinational and and i decree that as you live here you will see the nine yards of the blueprint of how that small business can literally become a multinational in the name of jesus the lord who is able to do for one is able to do for all i cited the example of the startup earlier right now they have 200 staff from starting from their homes it's the same god they serve that you serve and in the name of Jesus, I release that grace in the name of Jesus. Much more than anything, an expansion in your mind to see how you can collaborate with men and women, be they in the kingdom or not. The wisdom to collaborate and take wealth where it belongs in the name of Jesus released unto you. I hear the Holy Spirit say, decree this unto them. And some of you may have to expand your knowledge in this area. There's something called negotiation. That's the tool for jump champions. There's something called negotiation. That's the tool for champions. That's how men sit on the table and sell countries. The money of this nation, men can sit down and share it on the strength of negotiation. And you see what's different about you and me? We carry Jesus. So we can enter there and collect the lion's share. Some of you will have to increase your capacity in this area. And I said that because a few weeks ago, I went into my pastor's office. I saw a book, Negotiation. And the Holy Spirit said, pick it up. And I said, Pastor, sir, can I take this book? He said, oh, yes. I read the first two chapters. My brain rewired. 
Literally. And you know, there's a difference between reading a book carnally and reading it spiritually. There's a difference. Because the Holy Spirit will teach you on sin strategies inside a carnal book. You become better than the person who wrote the book. And after that, reading the first two chapters, I had a meeting the next day. I saw strategy. I moved from just talking nonsense to closing deals. Negotiation. I moved from going to places where I should be paying millions to telling them you will do it for free and add jara. Lord, I release that grace over this house today. The grace for negotiation as a king and priest be released unto this house in the name of Jesus. That you sit in your authority as a priest and the Lord by himself directs you on how to take what he has given unto you in the name of Jesus. From today, you will never be timid. Hallelujah. Uh, I carry the lion-like anointing. I carry the defiant grace in the name of Jesus. I release it unto this house in the name of Jesus. You walk from today with defiance. And that where your generation never stepped into, step it and take it. In the name of Jesus. Where your generation, generations never thought of, enter and take it. In the name of Jesus. The kingdom of the righteous suffer violent, the violent take it by force. I release the violent anointing on this house. Violence in the name of Jesus. And the parazi katekari sakataska. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I say to sing this song. Because when we are finished petitioning, we thank God because we have received. Ni bobo no. Eshe ni gogo no eshe o baba ni gogo no eshe ni gogo no eshe o Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we live here today with a new Nigeria in our hearts first. Because before we see it, we'll carry it as seeds. We live here today, Father, with a conviction of a new Nigeria in our heart. And in the name of Jesus, the grace to steward until we birth be released on all of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed.